Lectures. Welcome back to class. This is lecture three of useful shit to know. Let's get into it. All right, so today you got yourself, you've got, you've got yourself as a little video game avatar. Okay, you've got your, whatever your character is. You need to power level this bitch. That's what we're coming to university for. We're gonna boost this guy. Power level. We're talking about, we're talking about power leveling our avatar in the real world. If we want to do this, we got to understand a couple ideas first. And that's what we described in lecture one and lecture two. We laid the framework for power leveling. Now we're going to get into it a little more. So remember last time we talked about hierarchies. It's a portable triangle. Hierarchies? Is that how you spell it? H I. Yeah, I got it right. All right, cool. Hierarchies. So we explain what a hierarchy is, they kind of organize stuff. We kind of have two realms, right? We have the realms of facts, and then we have the realm of values. And if you want to go read about this, like read Kant, read Nietzsche. I, how the fuck do you spell? We're looking up all the words today. Uh, nee. Is that really the way it's spelled? N I E T Z S C H E. Holy fuck. Yeah, Nietzsche. Check that guy out. And the old homie, Ben Franklin. They talk about this a lot. Okay, so in the realm of facts, we have science. And science is our sophisticated way of thinking about organizing our facts. But we also have we also have the realm of values, right? Kant said you can't derive an ought from an is. Like you can't decide how you should act based on what you know, based on the facts, based on the science. So for values, we have religion. And what religion is is it's kind of the sophisticated way that, to think about the land of values, okay? So, if you want, you could say, ah, religion's bull I don't need religion. Like, yeah, okay, you could, you could say that. That's so horribly wrong, but you could say it. Listen, listen, okay, I'm not here to tell you what's right or wrong. I'm here to like think through some things with you, and we're gonna think through this together. I'm sorry, if you don't think religion exists, think through this, see what you think. Okay, so I gave you a little background. I'm gonna play a clip and we're gonna talk through it. Identified by both Nietzsche and Dostoevsky at the end of the 19th century, that it's a, it's a continuation of the collapse of, the collapse of the idea of God, or collapse in the belief in God, or maybe if you thought about it psychologically, as a collapse in the archetype of divine masculinity. That's another way of thinking about it. Okay, so what you just said, the collapse of the idea of God. What they're talking about in this clip is the way that we as the postmodern or the modern Western culture, Western people as a whole, don't really believe in the idea of God anymore. People nowadays aren't religious the way they used to be. Okay, let's keep going. I mean, Nietzsche warned that if we lost our fundamental foundation block, which was the notion of, 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 a, of, a, of a transcendent divinity, that we would degenerate in two directions, one direction being nihilism and the other direction being its, its twin, its malformed twin, totalitarianism. Nihilism? Nihilism just means like, um, I don't give a fuck about anything. Nothing's real, nothing matters. Everything is pointless. And totalitarianism is, I know everything there is to know. I can control everything. They're like two ends of the spectrum. And that was his diagnosis for the 20th century. And I think that's exactly what happened during the 20th century. It's a diagnosis of stunning accuracy, especially given how relatively early in the 19th century it was made. And Dostoevsky, for his part, made exactly the same case, uh, particularly in, in um, The Devils, The Possessed, the books variously titled, um, which is a study of the corrosive effects of really uh, of an ideology very, very similar to the one that reigns today in the university campuses. Um, the Devils is, is uh, a literary work that describes the intellectual and moral genesis 
of exactly the type of thinker who caused the catastrophes of the Russian Revolution. It would be 30 years later, I guess. So it's another work of incredibly prescient insight, uh, almost incomprehensible. Okay, so you guys all know the kid in class who's like pretty smart, but is kind of like a little fuck about it, like think they know everything, like a smart aleck, smarty pants kid. So what intellect has a habit of doing is falling in love with itself and thinking it can generate a complete knowledge, a complete framework. And if you, if smart people start thinking in that way, they lose their open-mindedness and they lose their ability to think and to reason. And that's kind of the disastrous uh, catastrophe that these guys are talking about. With the loss of that, see, the problem with the loss of that idea, and I'm, I'm speaking psychologically, I would say, which is what I try to do as much as possible. Like, you to know is an interdisciplinary class, okay? The scientist who's talking right now, he holds a PhD in psychology, published a bunch of papers in psychology, worked as a psychologist for like 20 years. He's really well read in history. He really understands biology, especially like neurobiology. Um, he's written books on philosophy and comparative religion. I guess he's not, he's not as much of a social psychologist as he is a clinical psychologist. Maybe we'll cross that one off. Also like well-educated in mathematics. Like any good research scientist knows a thing or two about math just because like you need mathematics and you need statistics to like say anything relevant. But yeah, pretty much just the idea is, is that if you wanna be like relevant and smart in the world today, you need to like, you need a broad knowledge of many different disciplines. Like, like an undergrad degree doesn't really, yeah, that's a good place to start, but like it's not, it's not the end of the road by any means, you know? Like, like it's really hard to actually become intelligent, to actually like learn how to think and how to, how to train your brain to, to see the world as close to its true reality as possible. Like, it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's, it's worth doing because it makes everything in your life either easier or better. Remember, we talked about, we talked about power leveling, our character. This is the, this is the strategy of how to power level, all right? Regardless of your religious belief, you cannot exist outside a hierarchy of value. It's not technically possible. You need a hierarchy of value to organize your perceptions. And I, 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 mean this, I mean this literally, I mean this neurophysiologically, in that even when you're observing the world, which as far as you're concerned, merely manifests itself for your observation, you're focusing, your eyes are engaged in a series of complex movements that are controlled by unbelievably complicated neuro neurophysiological circuits and you focus on something and not on everything else and that means that you pick something out of the almost infinitely complex realm of potential phenomena as of signal importance and that orients your very capacity to observe the world and that hierarchical structure that guides your perceptions is, is of unbelievable depth and complexity because you, you tend to attend to those things that, let's say, you regard as important. They're going to further you in life. So you need a philosophy of what constitutes furtherance in life, which implies a gradient between what's undesirable and what's desirable. And that, that structure, that gradient of undesirable to desirable is in fact the philosophical manifestation of the neurophysiological hierarchy that enables you to parse the world up so that it's comprehensible. And something has to be at the top of that. Well, it, it doesn't because you can be a war, you can be an internal war of conflicting values. So what I just said right there, you can be an internal war of conflicting values. If you do not find some form, some sophisticated way to think about organizing your values, you become just a wishy-washy, eh, maybe this, eh, maybe that. Eh, you know, I'll make decisions in the moment. People say, eh, I don't, I don't need religion. Like, I know right from wrong. Well, 
the thing is, is that later on in life, when we get faced with like bigger, scarier things, like we need, we need these, these systems or we really fall apart at our core. We don't, we don't become aligned. We don't find meaning in life, you know? Like you can be the smartest person in the world, but if you don't build a solid foundation, your house is gonna crumble and fall apart when a storm hits. So when we're young and when our brains are most malleable, when it's easiest to learn, we should be building these foundations. All right, guys?